Welcome to the Bearded Beast Show. My name is Bill. I am the Bearded Beast. I got some special guests with me right now. Hey, Gabe, this is your first time here. What'd you think of that intro music? I was, I, I loved it. I loved it. Did it pump you up? You ready for this show or what? It did. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. All right. We got Andy, right? Yep. I'm here. Andy, you're fr- where are you right now? Martins, you're doing some grocery shopping? No, no, we're done with grocery shopping. Now, Andy went home and said, I'm putting my foot down. I'm doing a podcast. We're not doing no grocery shopping. That's right. I make the rules. <laughs> Tyler, you're joining us from the gym? Yeah, I actually am. So, All you right. know, give us use the background noise. Give us the, the, the noise you make when you're benching like 105. 105? 105. Oh! <laughs> And Greg, you there? Yep, ready to roll. Greg, how you feeling? <laughs> Butter. You got us all sick, you know. Nah, allergies. <laughs> yeah, I'm only kidding. All right, I I switched it up. Did everybody get the message? Yep. Top yep. five, all time top five. It does not have to be by position. This is NBA all time top five. Guess who gets to go first? I did a random spin. Who goes? Who goes? It's, it's you. It's always you. It's always right. You. How come it's me? It's your show. It's my show. <laughs> we can let Gabe go first since he's new. Gabe, you want to go first? Sure. If that's what you want to do, I'll go first. Let's do it. Go ahead. Give us your top five all-time greatest NBA players. Top five all-time greatest. So, one, I'm going to go with LeBron. LeBron James, I got him number one. Two, I have Michael Jordan. Three, I'm going to go with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Four, I'm going to go with uh, Stephen Curry. And five, I'm going to go Magic Johnson. All right, let's go back to your number one for a second. You said who? LeBron James. I I got somebody here with me that wanted to say something to you. Are you ready to hear what he's got? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I'm, re- I'm ready. It's all fake news. It's phony stuff. <laughs> it didn't happen. <laughs> That's Donnie T. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Anybody agree with what he said? You got some solid picks in there. Yeah, they're all great picks. So we're all going to have a big conversation about number one here in a second, right? Yep. And just so you know, I don't have any of my notes with me, so this is going to be right off the top of the dome. Yeah, got you. <laughs> All right. Uh, who wants to go next? Mm. Andy, you go next. Andy, you want, you want me to go? Yeah, you go. All right. Yeah, you go. Should be no surprise, number one, Larry Bird. Number two, Michael Jordan. Three, Kareem. Four, Magic. Five, Kobe Bryant. I feel like that's a pretty solid list as well. I didn't hear no LeBron that's on that list. Yeah, I didn't hear a LeBron on that list. That, didn't that's hear true. A, I also didn't, didn't hear a Steph Curry on that list. Yeah, I didn't hear a LeBron or a Steph Curry on that list. Hmm. Who's up? Ooh. Greg, Tyler, Andy. All right, I can go. All right, so I got mine. Michael Jordan, number one. Kevin Durant, Kobe, LeBron, Steph Curry. Somebody's here to visit you, too. (laughs) (laughs) Did you just, like, make that up as you were driving home or what? Man, I don't know, man. You put did those you, five on the court. Who's did, gonna beat them? Did you actually? You got that's like the best of every player. Every did position. you actually do any research, or did you just like Google NBA players? I think it's pretty solid. <laughs> All right, let's let Andy go next because only he could probably have uh, a worse starting five than that one. 
Uh, yeah, I just threw this one together. Um, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant. I'm gonna go LeBron, Larry Bird, and then Kareem. Mm. Not That's bad. actually a lot better than what I was expecting you to say. Me too. I had I thought he was gonna say Allen Iverson in every every spot. <laughs> He's my favorite player, but I can't put him in there. Not you didn't fair. you didn't even put him in your top five. Uh, oh, I, I, I know why you didn't, because he missed practice. Yeah, that's what it was, man. All right, Tyler. <laughs> let's hear it. All right. On my list, I got Michael Jordan. I got Larry Bird. I got Magic Johnson. I got Bill Russell and then Tim Duncan. Mm. Mm. That's a solid list. All right. Mm. Let's really get into the reason why we're here. Number one. Gabe, you say it's LeBron James. Yes. Let me hear one reason why. Okay. One reason, if you look at his longevity, he's dominated the game essentially since he's came in it. I mean, we're, what, year 20 now? He's still putting up, you know, 28 points per game. I think it's like eight rebounds and six assists. Career averages 28, 7, and 7. And probably the um, softest NBA ever, right? Um, n- No, I wouldn't say it's the most skilled NBA ever. But, um, but players is, are more skilled. It is Pace soft, is though, right? If you put LeBron James back in, you know, the 80s, the 90s, LeBron James is still the best player on the court. He doesn't even start. Yeah, he does. LeBron James is still the best player on the court. No who way, is, bro. Who is 6'9", 260, as powerful as LeBron James with his athletic ability and all-around ability? There's been, there's been no one. Do you, do you believe that back then those guys are going to let him just drive the lane? Are they going to take his head No, off? I don't think they'd let him drive the lane. I just think he's stronger than them. And I, I think that even if they didn't let him drive the lane, he's still going to have his way with them. Anybody agree? I mean, if you th- Andy, you uh, agree? It's kind of hard for me to say he's number one right now. He's making some good points, yeah. I, I mean, mean it's so, I mean, th- let's think about it. So even that bad boys Pistons team, right? Jordan could never beat the Pistons. They had, you know, Lambeer. They had uh, on the inside. They had Rodman. What does Bill Lambeer do to do to LeBron driving the lane? That's what I'm getting ready to say. So, you know, Bill Lambeer is what six ten, two forty, six eleven, two forty. Again, LeBron James is six nine, two fifty, two sixty. Moves way faster than than Lambeer does. He's gonna look if 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 LeBron could play in a more physical game, I'm saying that he has his way with Bill Lambeer. But could it's gonna he? be much harder for them to stop LeBron as as it was for Jordan. Yes, LeBron could. He would have to. He, he would have stylistically. I mean, the game would be different, so he would have to adapt to that style. But yes, I, I think he could. And none of those guys really have the skill to keep up with LeBron James on the, especially on the perimeter. If we're talking, you know, them guarding him. None of them could. Greg, you agree? I don't take away from LeBron's one of the greatest players today, but I mean, do you think he would have won all these championships if he hadn't handpicked the teams? Uh, like, I, honestly, that's that's my big that's my one thing that I will say about LeBron James. Um, I think he would have won more if he just would have stayed put in one location and built a team around him instead of, you know, leaving and joining multiple places and building teams, handpicking them. Um, but, I mean, if he would have stayed in one location like Cleveland, Miami, you know, or got to L.A. sooner and let, let, let his, you know, his guys around him build a team, I believe that he would have won more championships, yes. Has there ever been a more injured player than LeBron James? I would say LeBron James has never seriously hurt until the last couple of years. I mean, he's had he's had like minor injuries. Like I know in the finals, I believe it was 2014, he had the cramping issue, uh, which is why they couldn't get past the Spurs. Um, you know, this year he's had multiple things he had to sit out for. You know, two three years ago, but again, I'm talking. You know, the last three years have been the hurt he's been. That was year 18, year 19, year 20. Most players don't put up the numbers that he that he was during those time period at that age is hurt or not. 
So, I mean, I don't think that takes anything away from his greatness. All right. Um, Greg, you said it was Michael Jordan. Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt. If you look at the best overall basketball player, it's got to be Michael Jordan. Now we got LeBron and we got a Jordan. So So, uh, do do they have different styles of play or no? Different styles of play, for sure. Oh, yes. But Jordan never lost a championship. No, and nobody nobody has ever outscored Jordan in the finals. Yeah. A game I mean, here's, has he, anybody outscored LeBron in the finals? Probably Steph Curry. I, I, I don't believe so. I mean, if we look back, I think the only finals he was outscored was, you know, the 2011 finals. When uh, they played, when they lost to the Mavericks, and I believe Dirk Nowitzki may have outscored them. All right, yeah. so, uh, okay. so here's a quick question to, to to talk about that stat real quick. Right. I I got to ask this question, and I I want to get a response from everybody. Does it matter how many points you score, or does it matter if your team wins? I be, I, I believe wins definitely matter more so than points scored. Yeah, saying what's the best team, not what's the best player. But right, I get. I guess it would be. We're talking about an individual player, not the whole team. But I guess if you're the best player, you would make the biggest impact, right? You would, and I believe LeBron James does make the biggest impact of any player in NBA history. All right, I got to switch to mine because you said that. I got to switch to mine. You know, it's Larry Bird. (laughs) Yep. When Larry Bird came into the league, the Celtics won like 32 games the year before. Do you know how many he won when he came in as a rookie? 62? Yeah, 61 or 62. Name another player who's made that big of an impact as a rookie. You know how many LeBron won in his first season? Uh, LeBron didn't win many games his first year. I'll tell you that. But he didn't make an impact with the – he played for Miami, right? Or Cleveland? Cleveland his first year. He right. didn't make that big of an impact like Bird did to the Celtics, right? No, but, I mean, again, about LeBron, any team that he's left, right? So any team that he has went to and he's left or the year or years before they've gotten there, they – he's significantly improved them. When he left by Cleveland himself? the first time. By himself, yeah. When he left Cleveland the first time, they Why? went from a – Hey, why did he leave Cleveland? Because he he did he did want to go to a place where he had a better chance of winning. He did want to go to a to, to a place where he had a better chance of winning. I mean, and as soon as he left, they got worse. When he went to Miami, as soon as they left, he got worse. But you take these and guys again, like Bird, Jordan, Magic. Right. They played for one team. Right. They didn't have to like and, soul go soul searching around for a team that they could win with. They could win with the team they had because of what they brought to the table. But it was also their teammates around them. I mean, if you look at, you know, Bird, if you look at Magic, if you look at Jordan, Bird always had a solid squad. I mean, he always he had McHale, he had Ainge, he had, you know, DJ, Dennis Johnson. And then, you know, if you look at Magic Johnson, he had Kareem there for a little bit. He had guys like Michael Cooper, James Worthy. LeBron James, second best player on the Cavaliers, was Anderson Bears now. I mean, he, he wasn't working with much. All right, but you take I mean, you take Robert Parrish, Kevin McHale, Danny Ainge, and Dennis Johnson. You put them on the court. Mm-hmm. Is that an all-time starting four? No, but I'm saying Larry Bird does make them better. Larry Bird does make them better, but that's a playoff team. In the 80s, it was a playoff team. They won 30, They won 31 games the year before he came in. Uh, did they? Ha- I don't believe they had all of those guys, and at least if they if they did, they weren't all in their primes yet. But I'm just saying the impact he made immediately was done by nobody right. else in NBA history. No one, not Jordan. Jordan won right. 38 games. Jordan couldn't win a title <laughs> until these guys got older. Right. Jordan couldn't beat Bird. Never beat him in the playoffs. Right. And, and you know, again, it was a different era. It was a different era. And I know we how we talked about earlier. The NBA was dying. Before Magic and Bird came into the league, so they, they saved the they NBA. Provide, yeah, they revived the NBA. So I mean, LeBron also came to a much different NBA than Magic and and Bird did. But 
But, I mean, with that being said, Magic and Bird did make the NBA what it was for LeBron to step into. All right, so let's go, back to, that- let's go back to Greg's standpoint of, of Jordan. And what was your reasoning, Greg? Because he scored the most points? He's overall the best player. I mean, he's a dribbler. He's a shooter. He drives to the basket. I mean, he has. I mean, he's got assists and other stuff too. I just think, man, when you you can go in anywhere. When you talk about basketball, Michael Jordan is like you. Ain't, you don't even have to watch basketball. Everybody knows who Michael Jordan is. Well, that's because he had a, a, a shoe, player. right? <coughs> Nike back the best basketball player. <laughs> All right. So, listening to a lot of a lot of people who played against Jordan, he was very lazy without the ball. Jordan had a score to beat you, correct? <clears throat> yeah, I would say so. Yeah. Was Larry Bird dangerous without the ball? For sure. Is LeBron James dangerous without the ball? I would say so. Yeah, I would say so as well. Was Michael Jordan? I can't say that. I listened to an interview with James Worthy. I'm sure everybody knows who that is, right? Right. Yeah. He said Jordan was one of the laziest players when he didn't have the ball. Easiest player to guard when he didn't have the ball because he didn't move. He just sat there with his, his hands on his knees. He said Larry Bird was the hardest player to ever defend because he was more dangerous without the ball. Mm-hmm. Did Larry Bird play in, was it, was it was it a more competitive league? Did he have better competition? I believe Larry Bird had more competition than Michael Jordan did. Did he have better competition than LeBron James? No, I don't think so. Who's LeBron James' biggest competition? Uh, I mean, you can name essentially any team in the West. I mean, you're talking about all time or currently? Yeah, I mean, give me a standout guy that you say, give me give me five of LeBron's career that you would say he would have a hard time competing against. Like, uh, if we're talking players, I mean, you had in his early days, you had guys like Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce, who were in their primes. And then, you know, uh, later on, you had Kevin Durant, you have Stephen Curry. Um, Giannis. You've got Giannis. I mean, you've got James Harden. You've got, um, I mean, now in modern day, you've got Luka. You've got Kyrie. I mean, you, you've got some some top guys going at Jokic, Embiid. I mean, you, you've got some top guys there. None of those names. Name. I didn't hear any of those names listed on our top five. Right. <coughs> right. Also, their careers are not set and done with. And look, again, but, it's a different. I think there's more of the best players. But if you look at our top five right now, right? Right. It's well, pretty, Tim Duncan as well. I mean, it, it has it has everybody from the Bird era. Right. I mean, you got Kobe. I heard Kobe in there in some top fives. Can't believe I forgot Kobe. I mean, and again, Tim Duncan was in that category um, as well. All right, Tyler, who, who do you have as number one? Uh, I really had it as a toss-up between Jordan and LeBron. Thinking about it more in depth, I think the longevity of LeBron, you would have to say LeBron. But he's been hurt a lot, though, right? I mean, he stubs his toe, he's out. (laughs) That's, That's also, you know, the modern era. Yeah, but man, I mean, when you think of the '80s basketball, these guys played with. It didn't matter what injury they had; they played for the game. Right. They yeah, played but for that's their team. also why they didn't have as much longevity as they do today, and didn't nearly make the money they make today. Right? You you got a you got a a broken toenail. You're making forty million dollars a year, and you're sitting on the sidelines. What about those fans who came to see you? <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, it's not more. It's not about the game really anymore. I would say it's more about the dollars. So, Gabe, do you agree that LeBron's more about the money than he is winning and playing the game? Um, at, at so I believe at this point in his career, LeBron knows that his body can't take what he took 
in his younger years. It, thus far, I mean, it's year 20 for him. Not very many players, again, have been able to play at the level that LeBron has been able to play at. So, I mean, these younger players who sit out, like, for instance, Kawhi Leonard, he never plays. I, I can never watch a Clipper game and catch Kawhi Leonard. That, I would say he's more about the money than the game. LeBron, at this point, he has to do what he has to do to maintain his body. So I don't have an issue with him resting. But I, I heard somewhere he spends like a million dollars a year on his body, right? He does. All right. Were those guys back in the 80s, did they really have the opportunity to do that? No, they didn't. They didn't. But, I mean, you know, I, I think that points out to why he's been able to play as long as he has been. So to put it's all of he, that together, though, right? We're, t- we're talking right. about, you know, how much LeBron spends on his body and who cared about the game more and who played on one team and didn't go search. If you take the guys from the 80s, they didn't have all the opportunities that the guys have today. They didn't make the money they had today. So for even them to be competitive in stat wise is pretty impressive, right? Yeah, but I mean, they weren't competitive for 20 years. Larry Bird had had back issues. I think how long did Larry Bird play? 13? Yeah, but 14? has LeBron really been competitive for 20 years? I was, he's been competitive for 18 of the 20 years. How many championships does he have? He four. has four. How many times has he been in the finals? Uh, let's see. He went eight. I believe it was it was it eight straight finals. One after that and one before, so 10. 10 times and he's won three? He won four. Four. So 40%. Yeah, yeah but you said competitive. Is, is being competitive not going to the finals? Well, and yeah, I mean, years? no, you're right. It is, but not when you have to build a su- super team around you every year. LeBron I mean, has never those, done I mean, any of this on his own. What, so so his last couple of years with the Cavs, would we really call him a super team? No, he had Kyrie. That's pretty much it. And yeah. Kevin Love, but you well, know, Kevin he's not Love crazy. In, in the playoffs. Kevin Love didn't do much in the playoffs. Well, because he couldn't get the ball. And, well, I mean, if you know, you're talking at the end, his last year with with Cleveland, his next best player on the court was Tristan Thompson, and 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 he was facing a Golden State Warrior team with Stephen Curry, Clay Thompson, Kevin Durant, and Draymond Green. I mean, what could he have done? Well, he could pin the ball against the glass, right, and not get called for goaltending and come back and win a series. That wasn't goaltending, bro. It's crazy. That was not goaltending. Right. That was not a good. And he came back down three one. Let's keep that in mind. Oh, that he was down. That was for the NBA, right? What do you mean that was for the NBA? <laughs> come on, we all know the NBA <laughs> had to have the story of LeBron coming back from three to one, no. right? So you're you're claiming that the NBA is rigged. I say every sport's rigged. I believe the NFL is rigged. Why would you believe the NFL is, but not NBA? Um, the NBA, I think there's too many different variables in a game to where um, I, I believe it would be it, it would be kind of hard to rig. I mean, you can't tell Steph Curry, you know, hey, go shoot this 35 foot three pointer, and it's going to go in at this exact time. I don't, I don't think that that can necessarily happen. Or you know, tell LeBron to run 20 feet from behind where the play started and come up with some magnificent block. I, I don't think that's something you can rehearse. Whereas the NFL, magnificent goaltend, but that was not a goaltend. The ball didn't hit the back more before he blocked. It. Nor was it coming down. Obviously, we have a different set of eyes, I guess. <laughs> but, but that's but good. No, I, I mean, mean I that's good. That I mean, we all need to have our own opinions, right? We all can't think like me and be like me. I mean, I understand that. So uh, it's unfortunate <laughs> yeah. for the rest of you, but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. Andy, who'd you have at number one? Uh, I had Jordan. Hey, what aisle are you in right now, by the way? <laughs> I'm not in at all. I'm uh, in my spare room. What'd you get? Did you get what anything get? good at the market? Uh, Yeah, we got some stuff for dinner. We're having some, like, you know, the McDonald's wraps that they discontinued. We're going to make our own. That's, damn. That's cool. Yeah, boy. All right, who'd you have yeah, at number make, one? Oh, damn. You didn't want to hear the rest? Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. But what else you got? You got McDonald's wraps? What else you having? Uh, well, tonight we're having... <laughs> oh, that's it. Yeah, that's it. That's it? Mc... <laughs> the wraps? That's it? 
<laughs> no, we're having a uh, uh, buffalo chicken. Uh, Who's cooking? Popeyes. She's cooking right now. That's right. And he did go home and put his foot down. He says, I got a podcast to do. Get your ass out to the to the kitchen. My food, no my food thing. better be ready when this podcast is over. I did not say that. I think I, I heard it. I know. Yeah, you, that's that, what you he said. He actually has his AirPods in, and he's actually the one making dinner. <laughs> For the record, I am. I'm, I'm being ratatouille right now. <laughs> I thought I heard you say that earlier, but I, I guess I could be mistaken. Yeah, I thought I heard some water boiling in the background. <laughs> uh, yeah, I had Michael Jordan as my number one. Any any reason why besides what you heard from the rest of us? Uh, no. Because, Not really. I mean, because I you like the you like the sneaker. I do like the sneaker. They are nice. Um, I just thought he was electric, and he kind of. He changed the game a little bit too. I thought he was pretty revolutionary watching like his highlights and stuff. All right, Greg, you still with us? Yep. He could never beat Larry Bird. How come? I don't know. Maybe Bird was the kryptonite. Your all time greatest player, your all time GOAT, couldn't beat somebody. So doesn't that mean the other person's better? Uh, Basketball is a team sport. Uh, Gordon, <coughs> Jordan's still the goat. All right, Gabe. Yes. Uh, come off that. Come off of that. That what I just said. We talked about this briefly, right? right? Jordan couldn't right, beat the Celtics. He couldn't beat the Pistons. He couldn't win a championship until those guys got old. So, what makes him the goat? So, I mean, I I have Michael Jordan second, and I have Michael Jordan second purely because. Of, of, of his scoring ability and his ability to play defense. I mean, he, he's a all, first all-time, uh, sorry, excuse me, first-team all-defense multiple times for a reason, which I, I didn't hear anybody bring that up yet. But, I mean, he, he is. He's one, be- one of the greatest perimeter defenders of all time. But he couldn't beat Bird because he wasn't physical enough. And uh, people like to ignore that. I mean, he, he got beat down by the bad boy Pistons. He got beat down by these Celtics. And – he could not beat them until those guys got old because he just he just simply wasn't physical enough. All right, so Gabe, you play basketball? I did. All right, so what if I come out from a timeout and I say to you, hey, Gabe, I'm going to take this shot right here mm-hmm. in your face, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shoot the game-winning shot right in this spot, and there's not a damn thing you can do about it. Right. What would you think if I did that over and over and over and over? That person's better than me. So Bird did that to almost everybody. Right. Three-point contest. Bird walks in, walks in the locker room and says, hey, I wonder who's going to finish second. The guy didn't even take off his warm-up jacket. Right. A guy that never practiced three-pointers because it wasn't right. part of the game. What could right. could Larry Bird play today? Yes, and I, and I know we did talk about this briefly. I actually... Um, agree on this one i think larry bird would be a better player in today's game than he was back then because of the three because of the three and larry bird people like to forget that he was he was a a, a pretty good defender he was a solid passer and he was a solid rebounder for his size specifically now imagine if larry bird could shoot 10 threes a game what it would it would it would averages look like now but we have to agree he did all of this with not mm-hmm. nearly the athleticism of a Jordan or LeBron, right? Yeah, I can agree. What do you think, Greg? I think you can agree that Bird is a shooter. All right, let me draw two uh, two Jordan um, <coughs> specs on you. All right, so Jordan's career playoff average, 33.4 points per game. Best in NBA history. Also holds the most 50, 40, 30, and 20-point games in playoff history. Jordan has scored double digits in every single career playoff game he's played in. Uh, Let's see. I I don't think we're questioning his ability to score, right? I think I'm questioning his ability to make everybody around him better. I'm reiterating why he's number one. Six championships, five MVPs, only second to uh, LeBron James with four. But he couldn't win him until 
Larry Bird retired. It's just coincidence. He came in the league in what, 83, 84? 84. So he couldn't win a championship until what, seven years later? That's not Jordan's fault Bird retired. It's probably a good thing. What if Bird's career went longer? Jordan might not have half those championships he's got. That's what I'm trying to say. No way. You th- you think you think he beats you think he he, he Gabe we he, agreed right he couldn't beat the Pistons till they got old. He couldn't. I mean, and and if you want me to be completely honest with you, I'm, I I would I would pose the question: Where is Michael Jordan without Scottie Pippen? Scottie Pippen, in my opinion, is a top twenty five player all time. Top twenty top top twenty five player all time. Where is where is Michael Jordan without Scottie Pippen? That's a good question. Where is he? What what do we think? Is he is he Anywhere near the? Does he have any of the stats that he has now? Do you think? He, do you think he wins six titles? I don't think he wins six. I think he. I. I don't. Honestly, I don't think he wins more than one without Scottie Pippen. Ooh, I don't know about that. I don't believe so. I mean, Scottie Pippen took a huge majority of the burden uh, of the burden on the defensive end, right, and on the offensive end. Scottie Pippen, if you look at, if you go back and, and we, we look back. He was their biggest facilitator. He usually guarded the other team's best player on the other end. Without Scottie Pippen, that would be Jordan's responsibility. I'm not sure he could do that for the 48 minutes that he was able to play because of Scottie Pippen in the playoffs. What do you think, Tyler? Yeah, I mean, I think I I have to agree. I don't think he would have been able to do that without Scottie Pippen. I mean, Jordan will tell you you couldn't do it without Scotty. You know, I'm really surprised right, Bill, that we that we ranked Kobe so low, to be honest. I've got him as my second. I'm going to be honest. Kobe's, Kobe's number nine for me. Number eight, number nine for me. Yeah, Kobe was in my five. Greg, were you going to ask me something? Yep. So, all right, if Larry Bird played for the Celtics – in the early 90s, do you think they would have beat the 90s Bulls? Yes. No way. Well, why'd you ask me? I mean, if you already had, if you already, if you weren't going to listen to my fucking opinion, why'd you ask me? <laughs> I wanted to hear you Jesus say Christ, it. I barely even got a chance to speak, and you're like, no way. <laughs> no way. Okay. You take the 85, what is it, 85, 86 Celtics, best team ever. I don't care what anybody says, stat-wise, with the Warriors, the Bulls. Nobody is beating them. Ninety six Bulls. No chance. I think the I think the, the sixteen seventeen Warriors would have to be the best team ever. You're going by record though, right? No, I'm going purely off talent. Off well, no, no, I'm going purely off talent because I mean they had that Warriors team that went seventy three and nine. Kevin Durant wasn't on that team. I feel like those teams with Kevin Durant were much better. All right, better shooter, Bird or Curry. Stephen Curry. Curry, yeah. Yeah, Curry. I'm about I to feel hang like up you on could argue Bird has a better mid range, <laughs> but overall I think I think Curry, you know, takes the cake. You know what you guys just sounded like? You sounded like this guy. Hang on. And uh um uh, um what am I doing here? <laughs> <laughs> No chance. Larry Bird's a better shooter. He did Steph Curry ever even score more points in a three point? How come? How, let me ask you that. How come Steph's never in a three point uh, competition? He was in three point competition. He's won a three point contest. Did he win every one he was in? No, he he hasn't won every one he was in. So you put Larry Bird versus Steph Curry in a three point competition. Who wins? Steph Curry. Also, I I think Clay Thompson is a better shooter than Larry Bird. Where's this Gabe right here? <laughs> need to disconnect that number. Think, think about it. Look at Clay Thompson is the is this is in my opinion the second greatest shooter of all time, and you, and they and they're on the same team. Huh. 
Uh, I don't know if I'd go as far as saying that. Do you think you'd know Clay Thompson as well as you do if he wasn't on the team with Stephen Curry? Hey, Gabe. Probably not. Probably not. But I also don't think Michael Jordan would be the same player without Scottie Pippen. Yeah, I, I agree. After so, you made that, yeah. that statement about um, Clay Thompson, did you hear all this? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean Clay Thompson. If you, if you, again, I know Bird couldn't shoot as many threes as these guys, right? But wait, I mean, wait, wait, hold, 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 uh, wait. What do you mean couldn't? Well, no, he didn't. I, I'm he not didn't have to, right? Stylistically, he that was not the style of the game. All right, let me get. Uh, let me ask you this one question. I'm going to ask everybody. There's a there's a gun to your head, and whoever's listening to this, don't. This isn't serious, okay? This is just. A, just just a question. <laughs> Nobody's got a gun to anybody's head here, okay? Right. He's lying. <laughs> <laughs> you got to pick one player to save your life, and he has to make the shot. Who are you picking? Is, is it a three-pointer? Three yep. Stephen Curry. Yeah, if it was a three-pointer, yeah, Curry. That's tough. Remember that gun's going off if he misses. I think yeah, I I'm just I think I just lost two people of them from my show. Uh Tyler and Andy, you gonna survive? Uh fuck. I'm taking Kobe. Oh. God. There he goes. He's close. Oh, boy like me. Tyler? I think I'm gonna take Ray Allen. Oh. Ooh. That's good. All the picks, Reggie Miller would be my second pick, honestly. Um, Did you do any research on any of that, or no? For sure. I mean, yeah. I mean, Stephen Curry is the all-time leader in three pointers made again. That is that I, I believe that's partially because of the amount of three pointers that he can take. Um, well, that's just the game I mean, today, put, right? Right. I mean, it's well, part of it is because of the game today, but. Let me let me ask you this question: If you put Stephen Curry back in, you know, the Bird, the you know, in the in the eighties, right? You put Curry in the eighties. Do you think he would be as effective as he is today? No way. Right. Why? Why do you say that? I just don't think he would have the ability to play in that type of game. Right. He can't. He I can't mean, do Stephen, anything but shoot from the outside. Stephen Curry is a good finisher in the rim, but he's small, right? I, I mean, I think that yeah. they would beat him up. They they would. Right. Yeah, they, they would beat him up. I mean, but you Stephen imagine him Curry, driving the lane against Carl Malone? Right. I mean, they, they, they would take his head off. The mailman's but, delivering, baby. Right, right. But l- let's say back in the 80s, you know, Stephen Curry, you know, he, he, he could shoot that amount of three-pointers. You think they would? You think they would beat him up that bad? I don't from out there. I don't think they'd ever given the yeah. opportunity to do it. Right. So, so here's here's what I'm saying. I guess here's what here's what I'm trying to get at. The further back you have to guard someone from behind the three point line, it, it you know the the further the defense expands out. Can we agree that Stephen Curry is a pretty good ball handler? Hundred sure. percent. Okay. So I don't believe anybody back in in the '80s could keep up with Stephen Curry on the perimeter. So, I mean, you've got to guard Steph from 30 feet out. So, Stephen Curry, he's got a good float game. I believe Stephen Curry could get past him, and even if he couldn't get his three off, he's a decent finisher on the inside, and I don't even think he'd have to go into to, to, you know, bang with all those guys. They would have to step out to play his game. That's the point I'm trying to make. So, you think they were slower back then? I do think they were slower. I think they were slower, and I don't think they could have – I mean, no one can defend Steph Curry now, if we're being honest, but – uh, I think they were slower, and I think he would have an easier time getting a shot off. We agree. I, I could see that as a balance point because if he's them, he's so much of a threat on the outside. If they don't step out, I mean, he's just gonna he's gonna drain it all day. But if they do step out, he'll, he'll have a step on them every time. Right. Greg, could Jordan could Jordan defend Curry? Oh, it might. Yes, Michael Jordan's the one guy. And Scottie yeah. Pippen probably could have. Yeah, Jordan could defend Curry. He's got the hands for it and the speed. But, 
let's keep in mind, we talked about Larry Bird and how he was solid playing off the ball. Mm-hmm. Can we can can we agree that Stephen Curry is pretty solid playing off the ball? I think he's more. I think he's one. Of, than he, I think he's super underrated because he never stops moving. Never. See, and to me, that's when I think it's a dangerous player, right? Because you're right. He is dangerous without the ball. He's always moving. He's coming off of screens and just, just burying a three right in your face. But that's what Bird did. Jordan didn't do that. Right. Right. And does LeBron really do that? He gets lazy. LeBron does get lazy from time to time. But you've got to think, LeBron also dominates the game a lot with, with his court vision, with his passing. And he plays more so out of the post than he does, you know, out on the perimeter when he doesn't have the ball in his hand. Yeah, he dominates the game with that push-off. <laughs> Again, different era. Different era. But, but he, I mean, he wouldn't get LeBron, away with that in the 80s. That's what I was saying. Right. I don't know. Again, though, LeBron is, LeBron's the size of Carl Malone and is much faster. I'm not saying he's stronger than Carl Malone, but he's about the size of Carl Malone and much faster. So, I mean, I believe that gives him a big advantage over some of those guys back then. Andy, what do you think? Uh, I don't know, man. About what? About which part? About LeBron or? Is Curry dangerous without the ball? Oh, definitely. Is yeah. Curry the best yeah, three-point shooter in NBA history? Probably. I don't know. I mean, he's got a lot of greats to fight with. You know, Ray Allen's definitely up there. Uh, what do you say, Reggie Miller? Um. Yeah, I mean, he's got competition, but. All right, Gabe, you mentioned something about basketball IQ. Yes. You think LeBron, is is he have the best basketball IQ? Does he have the. Um, is LeBron I more about LeBron, himself or is he more about the team? I would say LeBron's more about the team. Greg, you agree with that? Yeah, I'd agree with that. I think LeBron's more about the team because he wants to win. Tyler? Yeah, I think, I mean, you could argue maybe he's not as much now since he's already, you know, accomplished so much. But, yeah, I think it's about the team. Andy, you agree? I mean, yeah, I think he's matured a little bit. He used to be kind of arrogant, I feel like, but not to uh, Extreme extent, you know, Allen Iverson was arrogant as shit, but I still loved him. <laughs> All right, we got to so, get I mean, we got to get coming to a close. What do you got, Gabe? So, I mean, if you look at LeBron James, right, the only player in NBA history with thirty eight thousand points, for one, one of only two players in the NBA history with thirty eight thousand points. The only player in NBA history with thirty eight thousand points, ten thousand rebounds, ten thousand assists. To me, that sounds like a well rounded player. That's what I'm trying to say. I believe he's the greatest all-around player ever. Is it because he played for so long? Part of it is because of that he played for so long. But still, I think if you take some of these guys and put them in the league for 20 years, they may have, like Jordan, if he would have played for 20 years, probably have more points than LeBron. I mean, he only played for, what, 14 years? And he's fifth all-time in scoring. So if he plays longer, more points. But I don't believe the rest follows. All right, we, we got to wrap this thing up. I'm going to end it with one final question, and it has to do with uh, maybe something not everybody is, is familiar with, but it's going to be the UFC fights this weekend. Tyler, who you got, Gaethje or, or, or Fiziev? You know, I'm, I was really torn because Fiziev's looked really good in training throughout the whole week, but I don't think he's going to be able to deal with the power of Justin Gaethje. Gabe? So I got Gaethje by knockout. Gabe, who you got? I'm not, I'm not I'm not super familiar with that situation, but I do know uh, Justin Gaethje is a dog, so I'm going to go Gaethje. Greg? I don't even keep up with it currently. I don't know either fighter. Give me – pick somebody. Who's my options? Justin Gaethje or this Fiziev clown? All right, so are they both – like, are they both brawlers or is one of them, like, some like do more submissions like what they're both would, they're both know. strikers so they're both like like toe to toe throwing punches it's not about like getting on the mat no no Gaethje Gaethje's a really heavy hitter 
and he has one of the best chins that the UFC's probably ever seen. But Fiziev is so he's a kickboxer originally, and his technique is so flawless and he's so fast. It's gonna be a really good fight. I'll tell you though, so those kickbox, those Gaethje leg kicks are uh, like yeah, leg kicks. <coughs> Who you got? All right, so I Gaethje. Andy. I'm going Gaethje. He's the only one I've seen fight. All right, everybody knows who I'm picking because my favorite's Justin Gaethje. So, all right, guys, I appreciate you coming on. Who's coming? Who wants to be on next Thursday? We're going to do top five movie snacks. Who's in? I'm in. I might be in. Tyler? Yeah, I'm in for sure. Andy? Yep. All right, guys. Thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. Yes, sir.